everyone, and welcome to Amro Music's annual Music Educator Repair Clinics. We're excited to have you joining us today, and I'm really excited for this first clinic. I have joining me Mr. Prentice Wolf Wooston. Prentice, good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome back to the Repair Clinics. I know you've done this before. And also joining me is Mr. Seth Gaskell. Now, guess, Seth, not guess, <laughs> Seth serves in our band director services department upstairs. And he's actually gonna be playing the role in this session of a music educator. So he's gonna be working alongside Prentice. Prentice is gonna be teaching him all of the things that he knows because Seth is not a trombone player. So this will be perfect. We've got the teacher, we've got the apprentice, and this should make for an absolutely wonderful clinic. Now, before we get started, just a quick reminder, if you have any questions in today's clinic, we do have Mr. Joel Hurd over here on the soundboard. He's also monitoring the questions. So if there's anything that you want us to dive into, please be sure to ask us a question. We're gonna spend a little bit of time doing that. Uh, but today, this session, talking about trombone, particularly hand slide maintenance. We know with young students, those hand slides can get away from them, they can get dented, they can get dirty, they can get out of alignment. So hopefully today, we're gonna to be talking about some of the things that you can do on the fly to take, help your students take care of their trombone hand slides. So, right. Prentice, how are you today? I'm good, I'm good. Ready Ex to do this. Excellent, well, let's get started. Well, before we get going, Prentice, I think probably the best thing for us to do is let's just walk through the anatomy of a hand slide so that as we're going through different terms today, people will know exactly the part of the hand slide that you're talking about. Because okay. I know we have the hand slide, but there's specific parts, parts of the right. hand slide. So we're going to go to the overhead cam here so you can see Prentice's hands okay. uh, straight over us. And if you could just get us started, Prentice, that'd I would be great. just say this would be the outer slide, uh, and this is the inner slide. So there's two obviously it's different this fits into the outer slide and then you have your water key and the hand the actual hand slide would be this this slide because this is the slide that you put your hand on that moves the slide from the outer slide actually this one is so um and then you got your water key lock ring so okay and That's then on the inner slide, pretty basic, I, but you know. I know on the inner slide as well, and, and Joel, I'm going to go over here to this um, handheld camera. On the inner slide, you've got a couple of different parts uh, as well. So we've got our outer slide here, and we've got our inner slide, and then within the inner slide, you've got almost this indention. Tell me a little bit about that on the inner slide. That's the sock. So um, basically, seventh position is between the end of the slide and where where this indention. It, you see right here is the seventh position normally ends about r right here so um, that's just the thicker part of the slide which we call that the sock basically okay so as I'm thinking through this I mean you, this is just barely raised mm -hmm. so this is a little thinner this is a little bit thicker and there's just a little bump right here I'm not sure if you can quite see it on yeah, the I camera can, right but I mean is this the part of the trombone slide apprentice that's actually making the contact with the outer Co slide correct that's making the contact that's okay. the initial contact so if there's no dents no dings we really shouldn't have any contact with the outer slide correct in this upper portion correct Normally what gets damaged and what bends is these socks. They normally bend inward. I see it 90% of the time. Sometimes they bend outward, but normally they bend inward because, you know, a student will hit, you know, hit the slide on a stand by mistake, you know, uh, bringing their horn to playing position or whatever. But that's normally what gets damaged. And yes, you are right. This is what's actually making contact with the outer slide. So we're gonna talk about cleaning and lubrication and things a little bit later, but I mean, with all of that in mind, you know, there's really not a need to keep this part of the trombone slide, or, or is there, you know, lubricated, because again, the contact should be down here at the end. Right, right, you're right. Um, I think you probably get a little bit of contact when you're in, you know, first through fifth, sixth position sixth position is before the sock you might get a little bit of contact but I like to have a little bit of grease you know and uh, water throughout the throughout the whole slide but this would be your main contact point perfect. you are correct okay perfect now let's talk about what a good hand slide feels like so we've got these slides Seth if you want to grab this one right here and it looks like the lock should be done and just kind of describe for us how that feels so we know what kind of our end result is that we're going after here. If you go up and down, like if you hold it up and down, uh, 
just straight up and down the slide up and down oh, right here like uh, like this yeah so you can see as Prentice checks kind of the slide how he goes about oh, doing this you. you can see exactly so the feel, feel that we're going for I can feel any tightness or I can feel any drags when I'm I feel nothing on this one until you get to the very end. I'm assuming that's the point that's the we were just discussing. Right, exactly. And most of, by the time you're out there, all the weight of the slide is on the end of that sock. So gotcha. it's it's not going to feel perfect because it's almost off the slide, yeah. if that makes yeah. sense. you know. Now, Prentice, in order to get the slide like you have right here, really what we have done is that we've got to the inner slide is parallel with each other. Correct. And it's also in parallel with the outer slide because I think this is an important concept for us to understand that if we have any bends in the inner slide, it's gonna create a pinch or a friction. Correct. If we have any dents in the outer slide, that's gonna create the It's same gonna thing. create this friction, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to get that smooth alignment that you're talking about, we've gotta be both dent free, but we've gotta be perfectly parallel with our two inner slides operating within the outer slides. Is that correct? Correct. Well, what I do in aligning a slide before I do anything is make sure that all four tubes are aligned and we have fluorescent lighting for that. You can't do it at home. Uh, you, you, and we look, we, we look at it up, we put the slide up to the fluorescent light and I'm looking for two white lines like you see when you're driving, you see the yellow lines that separate the lanes, except they're white. And I want to see them all the way down the slide. If they disappear at the end of the slide, I know that the bottom of the slide is bent and it needs to come up, you know. So I'm checking it like this, and I'm checking it diff different angles, you know. Um, even where the water key is, I'm moving the water key out of the way, and I'm looking at the lines. Obviously, I don't have fluorescent lighting in here, so I can't <coughs> see uh the lines and then i'm checking the inner slide as well and making sure that it's straight and once i align all four of them then i'm going to see how they feel individually and then and then if i don't feel anything um which normally i do normally there's dents in the outer slide so in that case i would take a, a um our number eight rod which is this rod right here and it's straight it's super straight and i put it in a vise and i'm i uh, just rub the dents carefully out of the slide with my hands and then when i'm done doing that we have a roller which which moves the metal and makes it round again you know because when i'm pushing on the rod where the den is, I'm, I'm making the outer slide out of round, essentially. You know, I'm taking the den out, but I'm also making it out of round. So to make it back round again, we have a roller, and I roll the outer slide all the way around, all the way up and down on both, on both sides of the outer tube. And then I'll check it. And, and in, in, in the meantime, while I'm checking it, so checking my side to side to see if I want to see light down Step right over your uh, shoulder here so they can the see side, see. side to side. And I want light to be shown on both sides. That way I know that it's even on both sides. So at this point, so we, we're going to talk, we're going to break this down for everybody between the outer and the inner slides. But this is kind of the process that the brass technicians walk through when they're looking for alignment for the various slides. So Prentice, and talking about that outer slide some more, I mean, that's that's a repair that I, really requires some very specific tooling. Very, very, very specific. I mean, a vise, and uh, you have to have a specific rod. If you use a rod that's too small or too big, you can blow the slide out, and then and that's you're causing the more tube. work for yourself. Yeah, you're expanding the tube. And if you use a rod that's too small, you're shrinking the tube. And then it's almost, uh, I wouldn't say irreparable, but we, but it would just take longer to, to, to repair. Yeah. So you want to use the right size rod. And we have 13 size r different rods that we use. You know, um, normally on uh, beginners, they take a number eight uh, rod. So that's the net number eight size rod. Um, 
Some of them take a nine, but m the, ad the average is the number eight. Okay. You know. So as it relates to the outer slide, I mean, if a director or an educator sees you know, damage to the outer slide, really that's something that's going to require a, a trip to the repair shop because that's going to take these tools that you're talking about right. in order to do. Not, not a whole lot you can do there on the fly. No, not really. Now let's talk a little bit about the inner slide because as you mentioned, that's where a lot of the damage happens uh, is the alignment of the inner slide. And Seth, I'll tell you what, if you want to grab that inner slide, why don't we just walk through together First off, some of the ways that you check the alignment and so uh, to look at the inner and the outer slide together because there are things here on the inner slide that, that can be done in the classroom. Right, right. I'll show you some things that can be done. Um, let's just say um, uh, we're not looking at the slide because you don't have fluorescent lighting and it just it doesn't feel right. But we can, we, this is what you can do in the classroom. You can check your side to side. Because if the side the side is off, it's going it's not going to feel right. It will feel uh, like a, a slide is bent or whatever. So uh, one thing you can do. So let's just say that this side it was touching like this. Okay. Like so I'm going to come like, in right here. So you, like you, it's touching and you see no light. So you can okay pinch that back together. So if we can at the camera we can see light up here, right, and then. The, the light kind of disappears right where you're pinching. Right. So what that is indicating to us is we've got a, an alignment issue. Is that correct? Um, yeah, or more like a side-to-side -side issue. Okay, when you uh, say side-to-side, -side, what does that mean? Uh, 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 meaning, uh, uh, I guess it's kind of hard to explain. Side-to-side -side meaning these tubes are too wide. Uh, you know, like this tube might... The, they need to fit parallel with each other. Okay, so they're out so of it parallel. So might, it might be out of parallel, meaning this slide might be fitting in. I'll just show you, for example. So you're going to bend these slides apart. I'm going to bend them just a little bit. So it would cause something like this. If it was out side to side, it would cause that. So, I'm not, so if you can tell there, it's not, and, and the so inner slide and the so outer slide are not lining up. Correct. And if I force that in there, that's going to cause it to feel very draggy. If, I, if, 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 you're, if I'm checking that and I'm playing on it like that and I'm, I've just forced that tube in there like that without it being... And I noticed when you pulled it out, the inner slide vibrated a little bit, indicating that there was some pressure built. That, that's another thing. A perfect slide, when I take it out of this outer slide, should not do any vibration. You can see it it will be completely still, you know. So a way to fix that, um, so I'm going to push it back. And I'm not, when I push, I'm not pushing on the slides. I'm just pushing on the brace. I'm just pushing forward just a little bit. And now I'm going to check it again. So now it seems to be back where it was before. Now let's go back to the side to side thing. That's more of a width thing, but that also um, that also correlates with the side to side. So if it's off side to side, I'm going to, you know, I, I think you could probably do this in, in the band room and just, I'm not, again, I'm not moving uh, or any pressure on the inner slide. Now before you do this move, I, I want to break some things down here. So you've got one inner slide inside and outer slide here correct so, so you're not going to move this slide what you're really trying to do here is adjust this this, this slide this brace this really, brace that really doesn't want to move because they're not meant to move but so I'm by grabbing it, it here and you're changing the direction correct. of this inner slide a little and bit. i can change the up and down as well remember how we talked about it being too wide when we put it in the slide i can change that here too but I, what I'm doing is I'm just very lightly, well, not lightly, but I'm, they're putting a little bit of force behind it. And I'm, I'm going to put it down here. And then I'm just moving it to the right just a little bit. And okay, you can, so you see, can see, see how see it's barely moving. a wiggle. Yeah, barely a wiggle. And a wiggle goes a long way. So, and so let's see here. So let's get this ring out of the way here. Okay. So. Now you can see it's back to 
having a space in between it. So what, and what we're looking at here is all the way down, this, this inner and outer slide is an equal space. I have to get the camera just lined up all the way down top to bottom. And you want to see light. That's what you want to see top to bottom, okay. light all the way down. And then you flip and it around. The, and it's the same. So now you're checking the other inner slide, or the other side of the same slide, I should say. Correct. And it doesn't really matter which tube you go in. I just normally like to use the bottom tube. Uh, that's just my personal preference because when I'm rebuilding a slide, I always desolder this joint right here. So this is easier to manipulate because when we rebuild them, we don't desolder anything right here. We, we take it apart right here. So this, this side is easier to manipulate than this side. So when I'm doing those movements, I normally try to do it with this, with the bottom tube in, and I'm, I'm manipulating the, the top tube. Okay. You know. In this so case, being the tube with the, the mouthpiece receiver. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, so, so really, you're not trying to move both tubes at the same time. You're picking one. Picking one. Typically the one with the mouthpiece receiver. Correct. And, and you're trying to manipulate that tube in line with the outer tube. Outer, outer tube, tube. right, yeah. correct. And okay. the only reason I'm, again, the only reason I'm doing it with the mouthpiece receiver is because when we rebuild slides, we take them apart. We, re, we desolder this. And that's why I choose to work on this end because it's easier to move than this end. Gotcha. Okay. So I don't know if, um, if that answered your question, but yeah. Um, and normally, I, I, this may be another thing that um, I would say you could do. Um, and, and yeah, let's walk through this. And then actually, what I'd love to do is maybe have you pull one and see if we can get Seth to, to kind of coach him back oh, into getting it okay. alignment. And okay. then, Prentice, I, I want to point out, too, when you were working on this inner slide, what I noticed is you weren't grabbing it, even though the separation was down here at the socks, right? Correct. You were not grabbing it down here and pulling them apart. No. You were grabbing them at the top. So it's, it's a little bit, just to point it, it's, it's a little counterintuitive because you, the pressure is here. Right but you're adjusting it at the top of the inner, of the inner slide. Right. Well, the reason being because when I push this, I'm moving the whole slide. I'm not just moving the sock. I don't want to just move the sock. I want to move the whole slide inward because in, in measuring it side to side or however I measure it, it's not just this that's out of line. It's the whole, th it's the whole slide. So what I'm tr I'm when I push it, it's not just moving, like you said, not just the sock. It's moving the whole slide. That's what I want to move. Now, when I'm looking at it in the fluorescent lighting, and let's just say it's going down here and the light disappears, that's telling me that this sock is bent inward. And at that point, I'm manipulating the sock with my hands and moving the sock to bring it back and it's, I move it and check it, move it and check it. It's a constant, uh, you know, a little bit of movement and then I'm checking it. A little bit of movement and then I'm checking it. And then once I feel like it's straight, then I take it into the inner slides. So but, as I'm kind of thinking through all this, I mean, the, the first thing you're really trying to do is check that inner slide for, to, to ensure that it itself is not straight, not necessarily parallel, but, but that straight, it's straight, straight. Because, and you do that by checking the fluorescent light mm -hmm. and you're looking for any dips or valleys Correct. as you're looking at the reflection Correct. of the light. Dips or valleys. Because once we get the inner slide straight, then we can work on getting it parallel correct. to each other. Is that, am I correct. understanding That's that? right. That's correct. Okay. Um, yeah, that's correct. Um, and normally, normally, um, there are dents in the outer slides sometimes, but normally it's the inner slides that are out of alignment. Okay. You know, uh, uh, nine times out of ten, the socks are bent from damaged from hitting the slides. You know, um, and then sometimes, you know, I don't know how it happens, but uh, you know, like you said, hills and valleys. I'll look at, and there'll be a hill up here and then it'll come back down and straighten out or the sock will it'll be straight and then it'll just go off to the side you know but that just 
is what I was trained to do. And I mean, I have fluorescent lighting for that and yeah. the, the proper tools that I need to be able to attack that problem and, 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 and do what I need to do to fix it and make it right. Well, so. Let's see if we can take some of this information before we go much further and see if we can get Seth to do a little okay. bit of uh, maybe. maybe putting it back together and more damage. So I'll tell you what, Prentice, why don't you grab that slide that you've been working with okay. there. And if you don't mind, let's just kind of knock it out of alignment pretty good. Pretty good. Maybe over-exaggerate it okay. so, that, so that we can get a good shot on camera. Okay. And then and we to can make it impossible for me. Make it hard on <laughs> Seth to put it back together. Okay. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm always, I'm very nitpicky when it comes to my slides. I like, you know, especially checking them. Fingerprints and all that stuff has a lot to do with it feeling well. If you have fingerprints all the way down it and any residue, it's, any residue, it's, it's not, not going to feel, even after you've aligned it, it'll feel a little gummy. And, and we'll do, as, after we get through this, we'll do kind of a thorough cleaning of these trombones okay. so that, that people can see kind of the process you guys go through. Okay, so again, kind of digging at the front. Joel, I'm going to go back to our handheld here. <coughs> so now it's wide. Okay, so we can see, I'm going to zoom in here. So you can see when Prentice put pressure on that, and we can force this back in. So, I mean, you can get it to play just by kind of gently in there, but, but we've got a lot of pressure that we're building up in yeah, that slide. I mean, yeah, like, look, I mean. It sticks. So you can you, see. I mean, you can just see with, with that, with just that. And that's no dent. That's all the dents taken out. That's just. And it's hanging, and it looks like one, three, and four. Just all the way down, it's hanging. I mean, yeah. I mean, and that's no, I'm not even holding it at this point. And that's with no dents. That's just your side to side. Okay. I mean, that proves my point right there that it can be no dents and your side to side be off and that's what you can do, that's what you're gonna deal with. Well, let's see, let's see if Seth can kind of walk through some of the things that we've looked at here. Prentice, you and I can stand over his shoulder, just be there to kind of help coach him on that. But you can also see just how much vibration when you pulled that out. Right, exactly. So we have an alignment issue Let me, I'm gonna, I'm going to do his horn the same way that I did mine so we can attack it together. Perfect. How about that? There you go. So this one feels excellent. Really, really good. Nothing, no, no problem. No vibration. Perfect. And then we're gonna mess it up. Yeah. So now <laughs> we're gonna mess it up. You can see, I mean, it takes a pretty good amount of force. I guess it's amazing that it takes so much force to knock it out of alignment, and yet it can happen see, so frequently. I just, <laughs> I just put a, a nice a nice little, and it didn't move at all. So sometimes this different brands act different, different metals act different. Some brands uh, have better bracing. Yeah, I'm sure some the age, the aging on the horn. On the horn has, there's a lot of uh, variances. I mean, there's a lot of different things that could uh, um, uh, cause, you know, the, just the age of the horn, like the, the brand, the metal, how it was made, all those things play a big role. Okay, I can't, all right, so this is what I'm gonna do. Now I'm really, I can't move it with my hands, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a mouthpiece and I'm use my canvas mallet. So if I hit it this direction, that tube is gonna go that way. If I hit it like this, the tube is gonna go back that way. You. So, you're so an now I'm trying, I'm trying to mess it up for you because yeah. I can't do it with my hand. Gotcha. So I'm gonna do gotcha. it with a hammer. And I'm gonna give it one more walk. Okay, so that, that moved it. Yeah, so it's that. So you can just see a shot even to the mouthpiece. And that, I mean, that's such an interesting example, Prentice, that a shot to the mouthpiece can knock the inner slide out of alignment. Correct, it can. Um, I'm gonna hit it one more time to make it even more out of alignment. Good luck, Seth. Yeah, I know, man, I'm gonna need it. 
And I should have, I should have, I should have implied this when I was talking about it earlier. Another way to save your hands is, and bring it back into alignment, is you, you can do it with a hammer. If it's too far out, I'm going to hit it like this to bring the slide in. And that way, I'm not killing my hands, you know. Um, it's just, there's, there's five different ways to do so that's whatever. an interesting trick. So, if, I mean, if you're in a band room and, and just like you are here, you're struggling a little bit to get a slide back in alignment, one of the things you can do is take a soft hammer or a canvas Okay, hammer now that's and out. There and, you are. and actually tap the mouthpiece. You kind of saw the amount of force. Tap the mouthpiece to adjust the inner slide alignment. And I, and I did it with a glancing blow, if you noticed. I didn't hit it directly. I did it glancing because I, I didn't want to get the mouthpiece stuck into the horn, so I did it with a glancing blow. I didn't, I didn't hit it like this, or like this, I went like, I just always glancing blows. Okay, it's a lot like my golf swing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just barely hit it. Shank City. So mine's, mine's about, out of, about out of alignment, just yeah, like yours, is if you hold it up, about the exact it's probably same about the same. Okay, so we're using that now. Now, now, Prentice, I mean, can we see this if we use a side to side? I mean, is the bottom going to pull apart so we can kind of see an exaggeration? Sure, sure. I can show you. So, uh, okay. So you'll gotcha. see on this side. So let me let me come next to you here. So on this slot side, we've got a pretty sizable gap at the bottom. Right. And then as we come up, that gap closes. Gives a little bit closer. Yeah. yeah. And on this side, it might be all the way closed. I don't know if I manipulated it that much conversely well hold on let me let me do it i'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry you difference. want to do it with the top slide because the the water key gets in the way gets so in the you, way. you want to do it with the with the mouthpiece receiver side okay. that's the way you want to do it so still same kind of outcome let's let's check this side see how there's a wider gap on this side. Yeah, so down here at the bottom. So you flipped it around and all of a sudden we have a pretty pretty big gap. So again, this is indicating here the uh, so, misalignment of these two slides. Right, and on this side it's a lot, a lot closer. Yeah, yeah, it's almost vibrating against it. Uh, okay. So, Seth, how does yours look? About it looks same? about the exact same. It's closer at the top, there's a gap at the bottom, and then side to side to use tech speak, I guess. It's a... Uh, it's touching? Yeah. So pulls a little further out, and it's actually further out at the bottom than at the top in okay. this particular instance. Okay. So in this, so we're using that outer slide to address the uh, the. So if you if you want to do it with your hands, you can. But I'm just gonna I'm gonna do the same thing how I how I took it out of alignment and put it back in alignment with the hammer instead of doing it with my hands. Listen, I have no clue what I'm doing, so I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do at this point. Okay, so let's get you a mouthpiece. Okay. This guy. I think that's one of the fit in that one. And I'm going to stand uprange from your glancing blows just in probably case should, uh, yeah. <laughs> if we pop that mouthpiece out. I'd probably prefer not to be. I think that'll I pop a tooth out. A bore. That might be a big bore. Let's see if that, that fits. fits. Uh, that might not fit. No. Nope. That's the big bore. Well, we'll start well, with we'll sets. Yeah, we'll start with yours. You can go ahead and use that mouthpiece. Okay. okay. So. And maybe you can do it with a hammer, and I'll do it with my hands. How about I'll that? I'll have to hit it this direction to knock it back in, right? So, right. So if you hit it, if you hit it like this, it's going to knock it this way. If you hit it inwards, it's going to knock it inward. Opposite way. The yeah, opposite way. Check. So in this case, you want to hit it. You want to hit it on the, inside, hit on the inside to knock it, to back, knock in it back in. Okay. Correct. And I'd hold it as when you're doing it, I'd try to hold it horizontally up and down. Like this? Yeah. I don't know if you're right-handed or left-handed. I'm, I'm right-handed, right so I'm going to hold it with my left hand and get a, give it a nice womp like on the edge. And I'm glancing it, so I'm not hitting it directly. So when I'm hitting it, I'm hitting it with a glancing blow, so I'm coming off, off, so the kind of coming off the mouthpiece. Yeah, but I'm still attacking. You know, I'm still hitting it. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. I guess uh, this being in the way doesn't matter. I can just kind of come in at an angle. Yeah, you can come it. in okay. at an angle, or you can. There you go. There you go. All right. 
I now check it. Now check it now. I would check it. Um, Check it more on up, up and down, you know. I would, okay, Wait, yeah. I would, I, like, check it with with the tube, outer tube down here, and you, like you're putting the inner slide in the inner tube. Just check it like this, so so they can see better what's going on. Like this. It's just check oh, it. I got like this. The I got you. Man, I'm not you might, you might want to just pat, bypass the table. That's what's good. There you go. And then. So, so did that knock it back in line? I think it did. Yeah, yeah. That, looks, that looks pretty good. So if you pull it out real gently, see if you have any vibrations or That's set. a little bit of vibration. I've screwed it up. Hold on. But that's, You'll uh, see. That looks really good. A little bit of vibration, but yeah. And so you feel like you're barely hitting it. And right, and it, it, it does bit, more yeah. than you think. So, probably so I'm going to put one more I'm tap. Gonna, I'm going to do this with my hands and push mine back in. See how Prentice, the Prentice, I'm going to come straight onto your face here, just so people can see how you're holding. So you've, you've got this kind of held into your chest, right. and, and you're, you're and holding not, at the I'm top. Not, and I'm not touching those slides. I might be touching them, but I'm not putting any pressure whatsoever on these inner slides. I'm holding this brace, and I'm just pushing it inward. And I mean... The reason you don't have to move it a whole lot is it's almost like a lever, right? Because you move it at the top just a little bit, but it exaggerates as it moves further down. Correct. So it really doesn't take a whole lot of movement there. So that's a that's perfect right there. I mean, like it's no vibration. Okay. But now I'm giving it force when I'm pushing it when I'm pushing it in. Um, there's a little bit of force there. I'm not doing it lightly. You know, I'm, I'm from a scale from one to 10, 10 being the strongest, it's probably about a five or a six. Okay. I'm giving it some, some oomph behind it. And um, then I'll check it. And every movement that I do, I check it after every, every little minor adjustment that I do. It's important that I check it. Um, because I could go too far or I could not do enough. So um, as far as that just goes, let me see how yours turned out. So in out. my instance, uh, it's obviously just a little bit out still, but I want to give it another tap. Okay. Or at a small adjustment like that, would be better to try to use my hands. Uh, maybe you try to use your hands. Just, just uh, the right grip. Let me see how you have it down here. I would try sure. to bring your bring your palm up a little bit above on that. There you go on that right brace, and that way you're not. There you go. Now, am so I going to feel it bend, or is it almost gonna, just as slight as you might feel it, and you might even see it bend? And sometimes I can feel it. Yeah. Yeah, and then once you feel bend, let go. So okay. just, you can stop and check it. Let's see here. Because your arms are like five times the size of mine, so I'm sure <laughs> the little pressure that you did. It's probably more so effective. I than still this. think it's. Let me see. Go all the way down and then bring it out, out, out of the, out of the slide. So still a little vibration there. Right. And Much why better. don't we check it side to side now? Okay. Still put the uh, mouthpiece receiver in this, this one. Just one, just one tube. This one. Yeah. Just that one. And just now we check your side to side again and just see if that made any improvement at all. And uh, check it. How do I get this around right here? Right, right. And just you want to check it like that. You want just it can rest on these little ferrules gotcha, right gotcha. here on both sides. So it looks like I'm still just a little bit out, and but it's yeah, it's still touching a little bit. And then you don't want it to touch at all. Is that right? Correct. You want the same amount of space on both sides. Okay. So on this side, you have almost the perfect light, you know, all the way up and down. So there's another trick. Can I show another? I'd love little? that, yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> let's just say that your hammer move and your hand movement is not effective and it's not doing anything. So when I check it on that side, I see light. I see light on that side, all the way up and down. On that side, yeah, I kind of missed the it's, light. It's touching. 
it's 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 not as much light. It's okay. not as even. I see. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to brace it, and I'm going to. It's easier for me to do it like this. I'm going to brace it, and okay, I'm. So let's look at your hand position here. So, apprentice, you have. I've got one slide in, the mouth repeat receiver slide in the outer tube, and then um, have the bottom slide out and I'm just bracing these together inward to so where they're not, moving. So this is just to hold it still. We're not Correct. really sque we're not really moving here. Really right. all we're trying to do is move this right. one inner slide. All right. So if I move it that way, I'm just gonna just a little movement that way. Okay. And I can you can see it where it flexes. Yeah, let me come over here and get yeah. this angle here so you can kind of see. And nine times out of ten, on. it is moving. I know it goes back to where it was, but even thousandths of an inch matter. So let's, let's check it now. So we have good space all the way up and down there. And again, I might have moved it the wrong way. So now we have the same space there. So you can see just so, on doing a simple inner slide adjustment apprentice, I mean, we've seen three different techniques here. We've seen using both hands to adjust at the top, using mm -hmm. the mouthpiece and a mallet, and then we've seen using one hand to adjust one inner slide at a time. Correct. Yeah, so all, all these different variations, again, just trying to get that perfect parallel between the two slides. Let's see. Let's see where we're at here. I'm still a little wide. So I'm going to push in a little bit more. And sorry, I didn't let you finish it, Seth. No, it's all right. <laughs> and now, now we're back. Right. Where now we we're back where, where we need to be. Well, in the interest of time, I think, man, this has been some really great stuff going on. There's, there's so much nuance on the slide alignment, and there's certainly some things that some educators can do. Let's kind of transition a little bit and talk a little bit about slide cleaning maintenance, maybe some of the products that you use, uh, Prentice, and then I know we've got just some really minor dent tips and tricks here. If we've yeah, got time, yeah. we might go to. Yeah. So let's do some, let's do just a basic slide cleaning because it, it all starts with a clean slide. If it's gummy, if it's dirty, right. doesn't matter how, how straight it is. Well, if you get your there. Hornet Amro, you're going to get it with a, with a slide rod cleaner, you know. Um, so most of these come in the cases. And what I normally do is I get a thin t-shirt or some type of material, uh, t-shirt material, thin preferably, because uh, you don't want it to get stuck in the slide. Yeah, and let's I hold just, it up for the camera just so people can kind of see. So, I mean, this, this, this is thinner is than like a, a t-shirt. I mean, this right. is very thin, and you can see about the size that you're using here. Right. Uh, Sometimes I cut it, cut it down the size a little bit. Uh, the width is too wide. And I always stretch it, but stretch it because these are this is stretchable material. Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's very stretchy. So and I'll just give it. I'll just put it in here. Let you do Thank that you. one. And I'll just wrap it around, and then I'll just go through it one time right here again. So one of the things I notice here, Prentice, is we're switching camera angles. Is that okay. you didn't pull that all the way? Through. Just this little. And then you looped it through there I did. twice. Right. And then I'm going to come over because I, I don't want this to damage when I'm cleaning. I don't want to poke a hole through the bottom of the slide. So I always just kind of cover this part a little bit. Okay. And just kind of go around. And then you twist. And I twist and try to get about the even, even amount. Once you get it in the slide, the, the rag is going to do what it does. But um, let's, let's get a slide out. Uh, so I just need to make sure this top is not exposed, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, what I'm noticing here, Prince, is there's not this big ball. There's not like this big knot at the end of it. No. Uh, not there is. I'm trying to get my knot down, but yeah, there shouldn't. There shouldn't be. Because I mean, how many times have even. we seen, seen a stuck cleaning rod come in? because we've got this huge wad of fabric at the end of it that we've knotted up in the slide. That, that, that happens pretty regularly. Yeah, right. So once you get it in there, it's going to do its thing. And I like <clears throat> just to twist, give it a twisting motion. 
and you'll hear you know that's and that's dry I didn't put anything on that but normally what we use is blue juice if you're doing if we're talking about cleaning since that's what we're talking about uh, I'll use blue juice you can get this downstairs yeah, it's real popular with trumpet players um, and I, I'll just put a little bit on here I'll just demonstrate and I'll just dab it with a little bit of juice and that'll just get any gunk out that's there and normally I do this after I've ultrasonic cleaned it we have an ultrasonic cleaner which really cleans and vibrates all this metal and gets it really clean and I just do this for good measure after I dry it and get it out of the cleaner I'll do this with blue juice and then I'll do it with a with a dry rag and, and no blue juice but you can already see how much dirt came out you know just with that blue juice um, you know and then I'll do it with a dry rag a clean rag and see how much dirt comes off after I've done it with this and normally it's zero to none I'm going to say a couple of things. I mean, there's there's not a whole lot of twisting motions. I mean, you twist it a couple of times to keep it tight. Yeah, I just twisted a couple of times to keep it tight and just to kind of form form the rag to the inner, to the outer slide. You know, and then when you're backing it out, you're also backing, the, you're grabbing the rag and backing it out with it. With it, correct. Because I, I think one of the things that we see a lot of times is, is we, we put too much rag at the, at the end. At the end. And we twist it, and then when we back it out, it's, it's not like a drill. Like, we don't want to twist it the other direction. Right. Because what that does is that balls that up even more. Right. It does. And you could get it stuck in there. So I, I just try to keep it, you know, thin, a thin, like you said, on the end, cover the end, and twist it, keep a twisting motion going, and... Um, Normally, I don't have any problems. Now, uh, Prentice, before you worked at AMRO, you were telling me a little bit about how you didn't have an ultrasonic cleaner at home, obviously, but you were you know, a pro gigging musician playing around town. I mean, how did, how did you go about cleaning this? Uh, I would put it in my bathtub and fill it up with hot water, and I would just let the slide soak in there, and you'd be amazed at what comes out. Um, and I would use my snake, my little snake tool here, you can get this downstairs at Amarillo as well. They sometimes come in a cleaning kit, all comes together. But I would run that through a couple times after I had it sitting in hot water, and you would be amazed what comes out. Uh, but definitely you, a brush through the, through the slide and then just let it soak in that hot water. Then I would get it out and just dry it. And um, normally I just did it to the outer slide because the inner slide you have felts up in the inner slide and if they're wet and you don't have a way to dry them there's going to be constant water drag because there's felts up here and when you get them wet you have to have like a pressure sprayer I mean a, a air hose to, to dry them out and we have a, a very powerful one and we get all these uh, felts dry so when we test the slide water is not coming from here and you know that's what would make a slide drag too would be water all the water buildup that comes that's in these felts up here um, so I normally just did my outer slide and I would just wipe my inner slide off with Windex and a, and a paper towel or something you know um, and then apply my my cream and water and uh, and then uh, that, that would be about it on, on cleaning at home, okay. you know. Uh, any more in-depth cleaning, I would probably bring it up here. Yeah, because I know, again, you've got, like you mentioned, the ultrasonic cleaner that uses a chemical and then a vib vibrations. And yeah, and waves. that's just, that's cleaning it perfect. I mean, I mean, and then we hand wash it after that and do all the processes that I just showed you after after we even get it out of the ultrasonic cleaner. So it's squeaky clean. But the ultrasonic cleaner does something that you can't do at home and you, you can't manipulate. You know, it's a machine that, that is really vital to what we do. Perfect. You know? 
Well, uh, Joel, I'm going to set this camera down, and we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, let's talk about some of the, the oils and the greases that you have here, because I know that's a lot of questions that you guys get. Okay. And so let's just maybe start at the most basic, um, and that's just the slide oil. I know a lot of students, and I know it's really easy to apply. It comes in right. just one shot, and so this is something that a lot of educators know. It's cheap. It's available. Uh, but one of the cons, perhaps, is that it tends to evaporate. Correct. I just, I think it's good if you don't want to cause ruckus in the band room and a disruption, it would be good to have that oil and just spray it. I mean, just put it in each, you know, slides and then continue on. And then for your more, pre you know, preventative maintenance, I guess, or your more in-depth maintenance, you can do it at home out of the band room. Yeah. So you're not causing a disruption, but I think that oil is fine. Yeah. But it does tend to evaporate a little bit over time, but, so I guess the, but it works for, for you yeah, know. the pro is, is it's quick to apply. Quick to it's apply. very easy to distribute. Something like yes, that. Something you, like that. you can hand it out really quick to different people in the classroom. Mm -hmm. The con is that it does just tend to evaporate. So moving on up, we've got some other options here for more advanced players. And I know this was really popular when I was in high school, the slide mix. So tell me a little bit about this. That's just a thicker uh, blend of oil and you mix the two together. Um, I, I used it and I enjoyed it. Um, I just would always lose one bottle, so I only ended up with one bottle. So, there you go. but but it is a great combination. They're just both a thicker oil, and I, I don't necessarily know the chemical uh, that's in the oil to go together. It works so well, but that's what it is. It work very well together, and. It just it's 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 really good. And uh, if I, I remember, you do a couple of drops of this and like and one drop of this applied on the sock. Is on that, the sock. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so again, and a little of that goes a long way as well. And so again, as we're moving up for more advanced players, as you mentioned, we have now two bottles to keep up with. Right, right, right. Uh, a more advanced player needs to know how to mix them, but they do last a little bit longer. And I know and a lot of trombone players they have a certain feel. Right. Everybody feels. has their own, you know preference on how they want it to feel, but that's, that is definitely some good stuff. All right, and then last, I've got a super slick kit. I know this one well, because this is actually what I played on, mm -hmm. and I know you kind of like having a little thicker cream, so tell me a little bit about how you apply this on the slide. Well, I would use the, I would use the cream first on a dry slide, and I would apply it from, from all the way up and down the slide. Uh, real good with my hands and then I would take paper towel and just wipe the access off with paper towel and then I would use my water bottle spritzer and just spray it with water and even though you've wiped the access off there is still cream on that slide um, there is enough that you can sp spray it with water and you're good to go that's my preference but yeah. everybody has their own preference I'm not saying that that's wrong or this is wrong that's my preference so, I remember the cream because it, it gives you just a really natural feel. Feel, but right. But again, yes. like you mentioned, it takes a little longer to apply. You've got to get some cream on either your hands or on the rack right. or something. It just and takes a little you, longer. Right, and then you got to clean up a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I think that's cool for the band room because we ain't got time to do that. And, and uh, that's excellent as well. Yeah. Perfect. So a couple of different options here for educators uh, to choose whatever's most appropriate for the musician, the level of the musician, and the particular setting that they're playing in here. Okay, so we've got about 10 more minutes in this clinic, nine minutes to be exact. Do you want to, do you want to address the water key? Yeah, let's talk about some an emergency repair that you can do really easily on the water key. Something that we see regularly. So is the spring pops off, right? Prentice, they would have no spring, the water key's flopping around. A lot of times the screw comes loose, so they lose the screw. And the spring, it might come off. Um, a lot of times I just see the screw is gone. So you have a, a water key that is, has no way of staying on the saddle. So a lot of people, a lot of people, this is the saddle that it sits in. And you have the screw that goes through the water key and the spring keep, obviously keeps it the tension and makes it open and close. A lot of people I see that put duct tape on there, which I would not recommend, just because of the adhesive. It stays on the metal, and it's just more work for the technician, at the, at, you know, to take off the, all that stuff. Yeah, so let's, uh, I, I, let's, I want to freeze on that real quick. Sorry. So, 
duct tape because I mean, when you see a duct tape horn come in, what I that also means for the time. educator is, hey, this is more expensive. Right. Because you have to now take time. The adhesive stays behind on the instrument. Mm -hmm. You have to take time. To clean it off. To clean it off. And, it, and it's, it's really gunky. You can't heat it. You can't do all that stuff. It's just a pain. Right. What are some alternatives other than duct tape if you get in a pickle? Mode I would say it? zip ties are good. Rubber bands. I'm going to show you a trick with a rubber band that you actually helped me with. Um, but... Um, uh, I would say zip ties, rubber bands. Um, that's about that's about it. I, I wouldn't apply any type of tape on here just because of the adhesive that stays on it after you take it off. Yeah. You know. So everybody's got. I think every band director has rubber bands in their office. So a cool trick. Let's just say that this screw has popped off, and and you just have the water key by itself you know, with no screw. Um, a cool trick is you just take two rubber bands. So, and then you twist it, twist them. Double them over. Double them over. And you bring them together. I'm gonna you can see we're kind of using the rubber band to act as the spring. And the advantage of the rubber band here is that it, it doesn't damage the one. You can, you know, a technician can pull it off really easily. And I'll pop that up for you because I know the trick you're getting ready to do. So you start coming under here. And I'm just twist, twist. Just twisting. I'll lift it up for you so it comes around and easy. And with my hand and then over the top. And, and then there we go. So you can see if so it still will cause, it will still give you a still spring action to where it's closed shut. And for a temporary fix, that I, I would say that would be the best idea for a temporary fix and the most effective yeah because it's easy for the technician to remove it doesn't damage the finish it doesn't damage the instrument and uh and it still accomplishes the goal which correct is to replace that spring correct. now you've got a couple of springs here just loose springs and i want to show these in particular okay. because there's springs that require special tools to put in and then there's springs that do not but if educators are going to buy springs they probably want the ones that do not require a tool uh, to be able to put in. So can you show us? Yes, I will. I'm going to take this apart. I have two different ones. I have a different one that's on the slide right now, and I have a, I have a, a different one that's on the table. So this is one style of spring that works really well because it doesn't, won't poke your fingers or, you know, it's bent on the end, you know, um, it's very safe to use you won't get any pricklies this is it this is also a good one to use it's been on the ends and it's just easy to apply to, to put on so and you like these particular springs because there is I know the one you're talking about where it's almost got the two wings in opposite directions does, right that, that that requires a special tool to get in there but you see doing so I just put that and I want to make sure that this little piece is I don't really know what to call that, but that little U there U is, is up facing me, you know, facing the spring. And I want to I just, the uh, reason I like these is I can just pull them back with my hand, with my fingers. Don't require a special tool to get them back mm -hmm. together. Get this up here. I know we just have a few more minutes here. Do we have any questions? I don't want to leave anybody hanging out. Okay. We've got about three more minutes in today's clinic. We got. We put Preston on the spot. He's got to wrestle with a ah. spring-loaded water key here. Where there's a will, there's a way. You can see you've got to maintain the tension. Yeah, you gotta, back yeah, that's the. That would be the only probably hard part, but it's still doable in a band room setting or anything. And then I'm just gonna. You've had a half dozen of them shoot you in the eye, and just rock it up at you. I'm gonna put the spring back in going to this one takes a I guess a flat. some of them require a flathead screwdriver which I have right here is a little little small guy right here I would normally use that to take take the flathead ones out because they're really small uh, sometimes works anything thicker than that it's it's going to be take the screw off 
And a lot of times, I mean, you can do it like this, uh, but, but, he, like but it's not going to necessarily hurt the place. Of course, they come down here, I don't think they're going to poke oh, yeah. themselves. They're not going to poke. The other ones you were talking about are splayed out, you know, and we cut the ends off. But I sometimes tend to cut these off as well with my water snips. You and see the one you took off, it, it has the ends correct. tucked in as right. opposed Right. So if you're it, it might be something to consider because it's one less thing to worry about. Right. And I can I, I these and kind of do do that with it. And I'll, I'll take my needle nose and just bend those wires in. And that way there's, you know, the student, whoever's playing, doesn't poke themselves or anything. But that's why I like these because, you know, there's less damage to your hands. And they're pretty easy to apply. Perfect. Well, Prentice, uh, we are right on the 60-minute mark here. That so. seemed like only 10 minutes. Man, that was quick. I'm going to set this camera going. down, Joel. Well, listen, Prentice, that was a ton of fun, man, and I just appreciate so much. Um, man, everything that you shared with us today, you can see there's definitely some things that we can do in the classroom, but there's also some things that can be really challenging Absolutely. and require specialty tools, Absolutely. like the, the rods here right. that you guys have in the shop. But and that's just one of many. One of I many. Couldn't, I couldn't bring my vice in here. I couldn't bring my fluorescent lighting in here. So yeah. but we have a lot of tools that really, uh, I mean, that you really have to bring it up here to get, get it right. Well, Prentice, thanks so much for coming Thank and sharing you. your expertise, appreciate man. You. Seth, thanks Seth. for being a guinea pig. Yeah, uh, we appreciate it. Appreciate you can you, see what else is going Thank on you there. All. Now, if, if everybody would, uh, we're going to take just a 10 or 15 minute break we're going to get this table out of the way we're going to set up a timpani here it's a great time to grab a cup of coffee a uh, sip of water use the restroom and we're going to get started back again and mr seth is going to be leading us and i'll be the guinea pig on the maintenance which i'm really excited because i alone in high school and didn't know nothing about percussion so this is going to be a really interesting clinic for me so we'll see everybody here in just 10 or 15 minutes we'll be as quick as we can thank you